Hi, my name is Phil Langdon. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to go through the hypostasis of the Archons, which is an absolutely fascinating read. To begin with, I'm just going to read you the introduction because it's actually quite appropriate. The hypostasis of the Archons, or reality of the rulers, that's what that means. Hypostasis means reality, uh, and Archon means ruler or authority is an anonymous tractate presenting an esoteric interpretation of Genesis 1-6, to partially in the form of a revelation discourse between an angel and a questioner. While the treatise il illustrates a wide-ranging Hellenistic syncretism, the most evident components are Jewish. To me, that says Kabbalah. And it is like that. Although in its present form, the hypostasis of the Archons shows clearly Christian features and thus can be considered a Christian work, its theological perspective is a vigorous Gnosticism of perhaps Sethian affiliation. Seth means anointing. So before we go into the text itself, um, I want to express to you the, the nature of what all these texts seem to be talking about. And it concerns the nature of metaphysics, which is otherwise known as spirit, and the nature of energy. So if you look at this graphic, on the left-hand side, you've got the three aspects of spirit that produce the Son of God in the middle, which is the fourth issue of spirituality. And on the right, you have the expansion of the cosmos from a singularity. That singularity, from a physical perspective, is the abyss So what we have there is the nature of spirit on the left and energy on the right, which is referred to as Shiva in Hinduism and Shakti, male and female in a sense, only purely because spirit impregnates matter in a sense. So it, it's like the male impregnating a female. So physical nature is female, basically, and um, spiritual nature is considered male only in allegorical terms, not literally. Um, spirit is zero-dimensional. All those three aspects of spirit are all singular nature, because the zero dimension is singular nature, otherwise known as monad uh, in the ancient times. They'd call it monad. Uh, and we have God, who is ineffable. We have you and me, the, uh, the nature of a, a singularity in the manifestation, known as the, the, the uh, universe. Um, we apparently are indestructible singularities because we are effectively uh, manifestations from original spirit in creation. Um, and our opposite, which is our safety net when we die, in fact, is called the abyss. which is otherwise known as the mental plane. But because it's the union of heaven and earth, or spirit and energy, the abyss with the light, it has both qualities at once. So it can be thought of as um, the expansion of the Holy Spirit and therefore a holy domain, an aeon of God, because it's God who, who expands from the center of your head as the Holy Spirit producing the light in the abyss, in fact. Or the abyss is the starting point place of the expansion of what we call the cosmos or the universe but from physical terms that is a singularity is basically an indescribably small point <laughs> if you want to go into the problem with that that's fine but that's that's for a different um, time um, I'm telling you this because um, this is the pretty standard nature of reality that will be told to you by illuminates so that energy system on the right is said to have seven kingdoms and they're very very simple where they come from all, all we're looking at with seven kingdoms is the starting condition of the abyss with the light that generates then energy which creates atoms which accumulate to molecules which is the basis of the vegetable kingdom and then the animal kingdom and then the kingdom of uh, rationale if you like or humanoid beings that have rationale that can reason 
and it's reason that regenerates the light that starts the process off as its creator. So the same light is the alpha and the omega of the energy system, but it's only its physical nature that associates with the energy system because the light produced by the expansion of the Holy Spirit, being the Son of God, the personal Redeemer, is also the creator of the physical system in the abyss. And that's because the abyss doubles up as the um, physical scalar, energy, uh, scalar field that produces the uh, automatic physical cosmos, but it's also the mental plane for us personally so it being linked here at this place heaven and earth it's where all things meet and it's the gateway between heaven and earth the light in the abyss So it associates with the energy system by itself in its physical terms, but um, personal redemption in terms of the metaphysic of those three um, aspects of um, the, the triangle you saw there. So as God, we come into incarnation so that we can re-meet our true self, who is God, and then we can ascend, and in so doing, we is establish um, all three aspects of spirit within ourselves. And it's simply about coming to know them and you can only know them through experiencing them, but you can only experience them by coming into physical life because the, the singularity nature that you are and the abyss nature both have to do with manifestation and therefore they engage with the enemy energy system that is the manifest um, issue from uh, the completion of God, as it were, knowing the self completely. Um, so now in the energy system uh, we have seven kingdoms and um, if it's the light in the abyss that starts it, it creates this energy that um, accumulates naturally, generating a creature that can regenerate the original light by having union with God, their true, their true self. That's supposedly how things work and it's the generation there of the creator physically but the son of God spiritually for the individual. So the impersonal creation is the creator from that union with God. The personal creation is the Son of God for you, and you are redeemed, and you are now above the level of creation in terms of the fact that you've understood it and seen it. You've seen what's behind it. You've seen the creator for yourself when you ascend. Uh, that condition with that light and the little egg you see there at the end of his right hand is your position when you find yourself ascended into the abyss. That light is behind you at first, so when you turn around you find you're at the end of his right hand. And that is the place at which the cosmos is now going to expand from. So there's an awful lot of talking in these texts about that moment specifically and the fact that you are there with the Creator and that the cosmos expands from that position when you leave that situation and return to your body. Um, impersonally, the cosmos will start from that, that 
t equals zero state because it's the foundational timeless state that condition um, the light is referred to as Adam in um, Jewish terms and the cosmos that's going to expand from him is known as Eve now that you've seen that and heard that that system that idea there we're going to go through the text and i'm going to point out when it's as it's occurring in the text and what they're talking about and why they're talking about it there's lots of very interesting um, little bits and pieces in this particular text that i haven't found in other texts for instance the distinction between soul and spirit which i've not heard before i find very interesting because I had a discussion with Pierre Sabac in September 2018 and he brought that subject up and I hadn't gone over that issue um, at that point and I didn't know how previous Illuminates saw that issue personally because I had no reference. Here is a reference to that directly and what they're saying is they're calling a person who is before ascension soul to refer to the fact that they have come from God in the first place. They are an aspect or a spark of the divine anyway. But when they ascend and come to know themselves fully and come to understand the nature of creation as a result as well, um, they're referred to as spirit because you are born in spirit away from the physical domain. So there's an interesting distinction that I didn't expect before I read this text. In other words, it's the same thing, soul and spirit, fundamentally, but it, it's just about the condition of that particular soul and how, what their awareness is. Are they aware that God is their true self? And that their safety net is the abyss. You know, do, they, do you know that about yourself? Well, the only way to know it is to actually experience it. So you need to meet God, um, just so you know how to do that. You, you, you inculcate samadhi in yourself, which is pure relaxation, especially of your mind. God is not about thinking, thoughts, or emotion. God is simply pure being. So if you become just your pure being and step away from your thoughts and emotions into what's called Zen, you'll find God very easily if you then focus on a single white light and, and focus and become the stillness of the light you're looking at you become inculcated with stillness itself which is the part of the nature of God um, so you, you merge with God by doing that it's very very simple see very simple it's not it's not a, it's not rocket science for sure so let's start this text the hypostasis of the archons um, otherwise known as the reality of the authorities which states in the beginning um, that on account of the reality hypostasis of the authorities inspired by the spirit of the father of truth well inspired by the spirit that's reference to the holy spirit the father of truth is the father is god and truth uh, with flesh is the son of god so immediately we have a reference to metaphysic there that doesn't include us personally however if you think about the christian sign of the cross in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen that whole thing is metaphysics So you have the Father, name of the Father, and of the Son, who is in the middle, the Son of God, and of the Holy Spirit. See, so that's you, including you as a singularity, and the abyss as the expanded Holy Spirit. The great apostle, a reference to Paul, who, who apparently is uh, attributing what's coming next in this text, referring to the authorities of the darkness, told us that our contest is not against flesh and blood rather the authorities of the universe there is a, a, a statement I refer to um, or associate with cathars because they traditionally a cathar would see anything physical as evil because it's come from the devil or the physical aspect of the creator so it's just evil and that's it um, but of course there's great wisdom in seeing the great beauty in life and physical life Yes, even though it's an illusion, it's very beautiful as well. So you can also appreciate it and not just think it's all evil. So that you're not too extreme on one side. It's all not. It's not all good. It's not all bad. It's it's, it's both at the same time because the universe is the tree of good and evil. <clears throat> Rather, the authorities of the universe. Well, that which 
is behind the energy mechanics of the universe. Um, I would suggest, and then it says, and the spirits of wickedness. So it's not just the energy mechanics, it's there's, suggesting there's an intent for wickedness in the universe as well. Um, and that to me is the natural state that any creature is born into. Um, suggestively, it's wicked in the sense that they haven't met God yet. They're born of the devil into a, a, a creation that's referred to as hell. Because it's really tough. You can be killed any minute from a predator. All these things, you know. Um, so, it, um, it, when we talk about ego and personal identity, even for a creature, an animal, um, we can think of self-preservation and the uh, the karmic evil that might come about from from battling with other creatures or people battling each other for territory, food, anything, resources, energy, whatever, you know. Um, uh, children of the devil, effectively. <laughs> That's basically what I think of when I see that statement. Um, I have sent you this because you inquire about the reality of the authorities. Okay, but he has not saying what the authorities are or is yet. But the next statement immediately identifies what we're dealing with because it says their chief of the authorities is blind. That is Samael. A blind God, God of the blind as well, because he produces his own children, and as the devil, they're children of the devil, until they meet God and ascend and become children of God. Um, their chief is blind, so he's the chief, that's the creator, the creator, that's the light, as the, it's the physical nature of, of the light, the creator. Because of his power and his ignorance and his arrogance, he said with his power, it is I who am God, there is none apart from me. Right, now I'm, I'm going to suggest to you that that is actually a statement about creating a blasphemy that is associated with ex the expansion of the universe from the creator. The expansion of the universe is considered to be the blasphemy that he creates. It's hot, it's violent, it's physical, it's not spiritual. God's expansion from you as the Holy Spirit is an infinite pulse. The expansion of the cosmos is finite, it's not an infinite pulse, so it's not as good as the infinite pulse. So it's as if God's Son, as Creator, is trying to mimic His Father, but He doesn't quite get it. So God has to enter His creation and redeem His own Son, and reproduce His own Son as the Son of God now, who is redeemed, who makes an infinite pulse when He's produced in the individual. You see? So the perfection is the infinite pulse, and that redemption occurs in you and me, the individual. So I'm saying, um, when, when it, when it, whenever it says in a Gnostic text that um, Yaldabaoth, the creator, um, is saying, I think I'm God, there's nobody else but me, he is blaspheming and he's talking, and of course the cosmos I expansion is, is considered to be the um, from a sound yes the om thing the om thing the, the sound of the cosmos so that's why I think they're, they're referring to the creator as talking in terms of generating the cosmos um, using his power because then it says when he said this he sinned against the entirety so the, the whole cosmos is a sin apparently and this speech this cosmos got up to incorruptibility in other words the cosmos expands and energy becomes these kingdoms accumulating into the the creature that can have union with god so it, the product of the cosmos is is being noticed by incorruptibility by god because now god can see that he can have union with a, a rational creature And this speech got up to incorruptibility. There's the development in the cosmos. In my opinion, that's what you're being told in very, very simple, short terms. Then there was a voice that came forth from incorruptibility. Ah, now that's God entering and having a, having union with a person, saying, you are mistaken, Samael, because when God comes to you, God is the answer of all things. And your body and your, your slightly not understanding everything just before you meet God. Um, is, is part of the mistake of the cosmos that you're born into a state of complete ignorance and you have to work out what is going on around you, which is known as the great work. See, 
So God is saying by having union with a person, you are mistaken, Samael, blind God and God of the blind, which is God of the blind, specifying that he's cre created creatures in the cosmos that are ignorant when they're born. His thoughts became blind. That, that confirms what I've just explained, really. His thoughts, the creator's thoughts, the creator doesn't actually think. So what can his thoughts refer to? Well, if, if his thoughts became blind, and, and we are the blind children of the creator when we're born, surely his thoughts is the expansion of the universe that produces those ignorant creatures that are blind. In such a short statement, just four words, his thoughts became blind is like saying he created the universe and generated ignorant creatures in it. And having expelled his power, you see, it, to me that confirms that they're talking and telling us about the expansion of the cosmos. That is the blasphemy he had spoken. Yeah, he speaks the cosmos into existence. He pursued it down to chaos and the abyss, his mother. So pursuing it down to chaos, so the creator um, basically becomes us. He has to redeem himself, so he, he creates us, the creatures that have rationale, in order that he may be redeemed. His mother, they're, they're calling the abyss his mother because um, when that expansion of the Holy Spirit occurs from the center of your head, the light is the first product of that expansion. So it's a child of the expansion, and the Holy Spirit is referred to as his mother because she is now like a, a, an infinite, vacuous womb in which he has been born, as an, um, an unborn fetus, in fact, which they describe it later, because it doesn't look like you or me. Um, notice it then says, at the instigation of Pistis, Sophia, faith, wisdom. Um, so Sophia means wisdom. Um, and the light is acquired when you have wisdom, because when you meet God, you attain that wisdom. God is that wisdom and the answer you need for that. So the light is also referred to as Sophia in its, its feminine form. Um, notice, um, f as I mentioned earlier, feminine associates with the physical, the energy, the Shakti. Therefore, when you say Sophia, you're, it's normally to suggest the, the physical nature of the light as opposed to anything else, which is why Sophia seemingly has an issue or a problem that she needs to sort out. So she re is referring in a feminine sense, in this sense, to the, the, the physical nature, which is more like the devilish nature. Pistis meaning faith can be applied to the cosmos because the, the light is born as the product of the cosmos. If you think it's the same process with any plant that grows from a seed, producing the plant that reproduces that seed as its product, that's exactly the principle we have here. So the creator is the pineal light, but its physical nature generates an energy mechanic known as the universe that reproduces that light as the redeemed version of itself in every individual like you and me as illuminates. Um, so pistis, uh, pertaining to the cosmos, you can think of the cosmos as the faith that God has that is going to produce angels because that's what makes you an angel when you ascend. Um, so God has faith that Pistis will produce, sorry, God has faith that Sophia will produce angels for him and that will unify with him. Um, so Sophia and Pistis can be thought of as the light and the cosmos. And she established each of his offspring in conformity with its power after the pattern of the realms that are above. For by starting from the invisible world, the visible world was invented. In other words, the blueprint of creation is metaphysics. See, that's a tetrahedron. You can draw that as a tetrahedron.
Um, so they're saying that the foundations of the energy system is metaphysics or spirit, which is, in my opinion, correct. I concur with that. Um, and she established each of his offspring in conformity with its power. Um, she, Sophia, established his offspring. Uh, it's, it's all the products, the energy accumulation products, uh, in conformity with its, with its power. Um, the powers in the apocalypse of Adam are in fact the kingdoms. Um, there are many ways of referring to, he to them. Here they're being called archons or authorities or rulers, which means ruling principles, really. I mean, even the, the creator isn't a person. You can reason with this an automatic thing itself, so it's going to generate an automatic system that you need free will. You, know, you, you use your free will to rise above, you know, to choose truth over it's nonsense as it were it's a higher way of thinking as incorruptibility looked down into the region of the waters her image appeared in the waters plus the light see as i said before sophia is a, a a name of the light as well and the authorities of the darkness became enamored of her well that's the energy accumulation cycle basically which is referred to as the Ouroboros as well, and the great dragon Apep, the great serpent, who is there in the primeval waters. In other words, his head is the creator, but it's been generated by the process of energy accumulation in the cosmos. So that's, that's the main body of the snake or the serpent known as Apep that needs to be skewered and speared and killed by the um, initiate or illuminate who overcomes the, the physical nature of its system by becoming spiritualized. Um, so her image appeared in the waters, that's the light, and the authorities of the darkness became enamoured of her. Um, so that there's now an association between the energy accumulation that's going to occur from the creator. Um, they, they're very much a part of each other because he is produced by that energy, energy accumulation as well. And the authorities of the darkness became enamoured of her. But they could not lay hold of that image which had appeared to them in the waters because of their weakness since beings that merely possess a soul cannot lay hold of those that possess a spirit, for they were from below while it was from above. And there's a distinction between um, pre- and post-illumination for people um, because of their weakness. Since beings that merely possess a soul cannot lay hold of those that possess a spirit, they can't ascend until they, they do the work in themselves and find God. So they, they can't control somebody with a spirit who is very, very powerful and knows all about reality and knows any crap that's going to come to them from somebody else they can just override that with with knowledge and understanding and wisdom see so that the ones who don't know can't lay hold or have no authority over those that do uh, for they were born from below well they're children of the devil we're all born children of the devil uh, while it was from above while it, well the light was from above and the, the union with god this is the reason why incorruptibility, God, looked down into the region, so that by the Father's will she might bring the entirety into union with the light. So there's Sophia's travail, her work, is to, is to bring about redemption um, through us. The rulers, archons, laid plans and said, Come, let us create a man that will be soiled from the earth. They modeled their creature as one holy of the earth. When it says earth, it's absolutely referring to what is material and energetic in general. It doesn't have anything to do with the earth you're standing on specifically. It's the material plane known as the universe. So it's a general statement about the universe or material nature. Now the rulers, something body, something they have, something female, something is, something. That's missing bits of text in this particular line 
with the face of a beast. So the light is compared to the head of a lion because it has a very similar shape. And of course, being the creator of structure and stuff in the universe, stuff is going to appear with similar um, concepts and, and characteristics as the creative principle, which has def definitive shape. I mean, the lion's um, whiskers can be thought of as the beams of light coming out of the cloud, which is the, the main head of the lion. See? So the rulers say, come, let us create a man. And the rulers, being the um, energy accumulation system, is going to automatically end up creating a humanoid type being that has rationale. So it's simply saying that the energy creates people. They model their creature as one wholly of the earth. Yeah, they can only make the physical body. Energy can only put a physical body together. They had taken some soil from the earth and modeled their man after their body and after the image of God that had appeared to them in the waters. So um, with the light and the, um, the nature of e Adam and Eve being two together, being the position you are when you see the light and the starting place for the cosmos, that is called the cosmic being whose head is the light and whose heart is the cosmic cycle or the heartbeat which takes trillions of years. So that if you think of that as a person, as a being, that is the blueprint for us because we have a head that has its own center and we have a torso that has a center with the solar plexus and the heart area. So they have two centers, therefore we are made in the image having two of these two centers, the same as the cosmic being. It's that, that concept um, being portrayed when they say make in, in the image of God um, because the Son of God is the image of God. They said, come let us lay hold of it by means of the form that we have modelled so that it may see its male counterpart, i.e. ascend, and we may seize it from with the form that we have modelled, not understanding the force of God, the fact that uh, a human who is incarnated is in fact the soul coming from God in the body, occupying the body. All they've done is made the body. They didn't put the soul in there not understanding the force of God, the presence of God as you and me in the body, because of their powerlessness, because yeah, they, they can't see anything above the physical level in, that, in those terms. They're powerless to see above it. And he breathed into his face, and the man came to have a soul and remained upon the ground many days, but they could not make him arise because of their powerlessness. Like storm winds, they persisted in blowing that they might try to capture that image which had appeared to them in the waters. In other words, they're trying to ascend a human from a physical point of view, but they can't. You need more than that. You need God. Only God can do that. And they did not know the identity of its power, i.e. God, spirit, which is not physical. They, they don't know the spiritual, physical issues. Now, all these events came to pass by the will of the Father of the entirety, as God. Afterwards, the spirit saw the soul endowed man, upon the ground and the spirit came forth from the adamantine land which refers to the diamond adamantine refers to a diamond which is fascinating because in um, hermetic um, parlance as it were the nature of the great work as an archetype is referred to as the gathering of clay to make bricks to build a pyramid that rises to gain spiritual insight which is brought from above to unify with that that physical creation that pyramid to turn it into a diamond and that relates to you and me to become a diamond to become uh, as, as perfected as we can be as a greater person as we can be It descended 
and came to dwell within him and that man became a living soul so that is literally telling you about the nature of ascension descending on a person god comes to you and expands from you and you become ascended and illuminated and you become a living soul it called his name adam since he was found moving upon the ground um, adam is the creator a voice came forth from incorruptibility for the assistance of adam and the rulers gathered together all the animals of the earth and all the birds of heaven and brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. The only thing or person who can name anything in the universe is the person or thing that created them, in this sense. But the creator is not a person who you can talk to and he, he doesn't talk. The archons are not actually having this conversation. It's just a way of storytelling, education to teach you about the nature of reality, including metaphysics and the nature of energy accumulation and that cycle from creator to redeemer. Adam would call them uh, that he might give a name to each of the birds and all the beasts because Adam is the creator. Of course, this reminds us of Eden and Eden really is the crossing point of heaven and earth like the word Nibiru. It literally is the, the gateway between heaven and earth, which is the location of the light in the abyss. Um, that is Eden. Uh, they took Adam and placed him in the garden, or put him in the garden, that's right. So Adam is the creator light in the abyss at, at t equals zero, uh, and he is the source of the, the place where the cosmos is going to expand from that he might cultivate it and keep watch over it exactly cultivate it means generate the cosmos and be the creator of it to, to now you know reappears the light in the individuals and the rulers issued a command to him saying from every tree in the garden shall you eat yet from the tree of recognizing good and evil do not eat nor touch it for the day you eat from it with death you are going to die in other words that's a statement to tell you about the nature of incarnation as if Adam has to become us to become redeemed so he has no choice he's going to incarnate in his own creation and um, so when they say you're going to die if you do that that's actually true you physically die because they, all they can see is physical death the rulers the archons they are the physical issues um, so eating from the, the tree of good and evil is becoming incarnated into the universe as a being standing on a planet. And you, they, they do die. So it's really a statement about understanding that, that, that situation, that people do come from, as it were, they are manifestations of the Creator and spiritually manifestations of God, looking for redemption and looking for understanding. They, something this, that's missing that piece of text they do not understand what they have said to him rather by the father's will they said this in such a way that he might in fact eat and that adam might not regard them as would a man of an exclusively material nature it's so that he can ascend the rulers took counsel with one another and said come let us cause a deep sleep to fall upon adam what have you just heard the start of that sentence how fascinating the rulers took counsel sounds like a bunch of people talking conferring not really if these rulers are the um, accumulation of kingdoms energy accumulation when they take counsel you're right at the end because the human is literally the accumulation of the entire cycle of energy accumulation we then represent the entire cosmos or the entirety of creation at once in a nutshell so when it says um, uh, the rulers took counsel with one another, that means we're at the end of that cycle because they're all together as one with the human being. And what's going to happen? Ascension is next, which generates the world of creation, which is the abyss with the light, which generates the cosmos in the automatic system. Come, let us cause a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Well, that's referring to ascending into the abyss the abyss associates with sleep because look what happens next and he slept now the deep sleep they had caused to fall upon him and he slept is ignorance ignorance so we're back to the start of the cycle 
where energy generation is and ignorance, the, the ignorance of just energy and physical nature by itself without spiritual insight, as it were, the physical creator. So we're at the, we're at the start of a new cycle. They opened his side like a living woman, and they built up his side with some flesh in place of her, and Adam came to be endowed only with soul. So now we're talking about ascension in, term, in terms of the, the archetype of the cycle, um, but we're also being told that Eve is going to be produced from Adam's side. Um, they built up his side with some flesh in place of her. That's, that's a reference to the the, uh, the cosmos about to expand because you're there in that position at t equals zero when you ascend just before the expansion of the cosmos. Essentially there, the concept is that you are the one in that ascension position looking at the creator who has been endowed with the Holy Spirit to, to get to that place and who is now going to experience the wrath of the creator as a result which says, it says that a lot of the time in many Gnostic texts, this principle. So all that's happening there is they're telling you about the fact that when you ascend, you're in the world of creation, which is about to become the automatic creation, which itself is a wrath and a, a sin. See? And the spirit-endowed woman came to him and spoke with him, saying, Arise, Adam. The spirit-endowed woman sounds like uh, Sophia. And when he saw her, he said, It is you who has given me life. You will be called mother of the living. For it is she who is my mother. It is she who is the physician and the woman and she who has given birth. Sophia. Then the authorities came up to their Adam. The authorities came up to their Adam. We've gone right through the energy cycle to a person that's ascended. And when they saw his female counterpart speaking with him, they became agitated with great agitation. So who are we talking about? The authorities, energy accumulation. They become agitated. The cosmos expands. That is an agitation of physical issues, physical energy. That's what that's talking about. The expansion of the cosmos is the great agitation of the archons. Or authorities and they became enamored of her yeah the, the cosmos is, is actually quite beautiful physically you, you're gonna like it aren't you because it's a physical product it's just what you're about if you're a, a authority an archon um, a, a kingdom they said to one another come let us sow our seed in her and they pursued her and she laughed at them for their witlessness and their blindness and in their clutches she became a tree <laughs> the tree of good and evil and left before them her shadowy reflection resembling herself you can actually take that she became a tree as the tree of life pertaining to metaphysics and the next bit and left before them her shadowy reflection resembling herself as the universe because it's the, the product of the, the spirit, metaphysics. It's a physical product. And they defiled it foully. <laughs> physical. And they defiled the stamp of her voice. Yeah, the stamp of her voice. If she's Sophia, if she's the line, she generates the cosmos in, the, in this sense. The stamp of her voice is the universe. And they defiled the stamp of her voice, the universe, so that by the form they had modelled, together with their own image, they made themselves liable to condemnation because they've made an energy-based system that is imperfect and they are only associated with that terrible sin that needs to be redeemed. Then the female spiritual principle came in, the snake, the instructor, and it taught them, saying, What did he say of you, to you? Was it from every tree in the garden shall you eat, yet from the tree of recognizing evil and good do not eat? Who is this? Then the female spiritual principle came in. That's an illuminate. That's an illuminate. That's Sophia. A reference to Sophia, which means wisdom. The carnal woman said, not only did he say do not eat, that, that's a non-illuminate. Not only did he say do not eat, but even do not touch it. In other words, don't, don't incarnate. <laughs> For the day you eat from it, with death you are going to die. And the snake, the instructor, said, 
With death you shall not die, for it was out of jealousy that he, he, said this to you. He is not God. He is the creator devil. Rather your eyes shall open and you shall come to be like gods. That's exactly right. I don't even need to interpret that sentence. Recognizing evil and good precisely. <laughs> That's absolutely true. And the female instructing principle was taken away from the snake and she left it behind merely a thing of the earth. In other words, that's referring to ascension up above, away from physical nature. Because she is the light. Now she's perfected in ascension. It's, it's the son of God. It's the redeemer. And the carnal woman took from the tree and ate, became incarnated, and she gave to her husband as well as herself. You might not think that's talking about becoming incarnated because they're already there. But the, in the garden, we're talking about Eden. So we're talking about the manifestation of the creative principle and the cosmos becoming the human being to ascend, to, in order to ascend. Um, so we are talking about becoming incarnated in order to you know, become inculcated with the tree of good and evil, eating from it, dealing with it, living in it, etc. And she gave to her husband as well as herself, and these beings that possessed only a soul ate, when she gave to her husband, of course, that everything physical is female principle here. We're, look, we're looking at archetype at this level. Um, and these beings that possessed only a soul ate. In other words, as we heard before, that the word soul is referring to pre-ascension to a person. And their imperfection became apparent in their lack of acquaintance. And their physical nature, their imperfection, became apparent in their lack of acquaintance with God uh, and spiritual nature. And they recognized that they were naked of the spiritual element. They were not ascended. They could only realize that they were physical in nature only. They haven't become um, God yet. And took fig leaves and bound them upon their loins. Then the chief ruler came and he said, Adam, where are you? Notice the chief ruler. That's the light. That's the creator. And he said, Adam, where are you? Now he's talking to the manifestation of his own self in, in the cosmos, as it were. For he did not understand what had happened. Because they're all gone. So as a creator, when, when the cosmos expands, that's what takes over. And you disappear, as it were, but only then reappear in the cosmos. So there's a, a separation and distinction between those two issues that he's disappeared and, and the stuff of the cosmos has disappeared to him as it were he did not understand what had happened yeah the cosmos expanded away from him and adam said i heard your voice and was afraid because i was naked and i hid in the cosmos as people the ruler said why did you hide unless it is because you have eaten from the tree you see unless you've become incarnated you've eaten from the tree of good and evil the universe from which alone I commanded you not to eat, and you have eaten. Adam said, The woman that you gave me, she gave me to she gave to me, and I ate. And the arrogant ruler cursed the woman. That's the devil who's arrogant. He cursed the um nature of uh, the universe in in providing a means for redemption because he he is not redeemed and he always remains as the the physical creator as such see he always has that physical quality so the physical creator always is like that and he doesn't want you to ascend because that's away from him he's never going to be anything else do you understand the the, the 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 sort of thinking behind that it's a permanent situation that can be talk spoken of in in temporary terms for when we talk about people and their lives that are temporary. Um, the woman said, It was a snake that led me astray, and I ate. They turned to the snake and cursed its shadowy reflection. Yeah, because the instructor has, has brought those people out of the energy system and into the light of spirituality. Um, and of course, the archons and the chief ruler, who are only ever of the physical system, are not going to be very happy, happy about that, are they? This is just storytelling devices to educate you about the, the nature of these things. They turned to the snake and cursed its shadowy reflection, powerless, not comprehending that it was a form they themselves had modelled. Apep was, is, is them. From that day, 
Deus. The snake came to be under the curse of the authorities until the all-powerful man was to come. That curse fell upon the snake. The all-powerful man um, is not a reference to Jesus the Nazarene, I'm afraid. It, it's simply a reference to um, the Son of God that comes to and illuminate. Uh, Jesus Christ, just in case you want to know, in the New Testament, the, the Son of God. Um, the Son of God is a pineal light, and therefore if you have a personification in the New Testament, it is the Son of God pineal light that is being personified. So it's not an actual person. It's just a way of um, expressing it and educating you about its nature by doing that. It, it, that does happen. You are saved, yes, but it's God who saves you and produces the Son of God inside you. So it is Jesus Christ who saves you in that sense. That's actually true. But it's not a person, see? Okay. Yeah, that curse, uh, until the all-powerful man was to come, that's the Son of God appearing and illuminate, that curse fell upon the snake, meaning um, the curse is, is always there with physical nature. Apep is just the physical nature and the process of the kingdoms. They turned to their Adam and took him and expelled him from the garden along with his, his, with his wife, for they have no blessings since they too are beneath the curse. Cosmic expansion yet again being referred to. Yet again. They keep talking about it in, in different terms. Um, we can guess that that is what's being spoken about because of the, the language before and after that every time they mention that. Um, next we have, moreover, they threw mankind into great distraction and into a life of toil. Exactly. So we've just heard about um, the expansion of the cosmos as they turned to the Adam and took him and expelled him from the garden. Expelling from the garden is cosmic expansion. Um, and then they threw mankind into great distraction. Yeah, the malay of ex the expanding cosmos, the chaos of it, and into a life of toil. Well, yeah, that you have a life of toil in the cosmos, so that their mankind might be occupied by worldly affairs and might not have the opportunity of being devoted to the Holy Spirit, becoming angels. So there's the over the overall view of the archons and the chief ruler not wanting people to ascend above their level. Now afterwards, she bore Cain their son and Cain cultivated the land notice of cultivating the land you might need a flail because then it says thereupon he knew his wife again becoming pregnant she bore Abel and Abel was a herdsman of sheep that's the crook and the flail of a pharaoh you've just heard about there that's the balance of opposites the unification of opposites look they're joined at the wrist and they make a cross like the son of God the crook rules the heart and compassion. You're a shepherd of men. You love them. You want to treat them right and tell them the truth and not lie to them and lead them to doom and ruin. Yeah, so you're a trustworthy leader. And the flail berates to say, you know the truth. The truth will berate you when you get it wrong. And it will stop doing that when you understand it because you work with it correctly now. You've understood it. See? Cain is the physical nature of, the, crea of the, the light as creator, and Abel is the son of God, spiritual aspect of it. Um, notice Cain kills Abel. Um, Cain kills Abel. That's the cycle of kingdoms there. Um, Cain is evil, like the creator devil. Abel is good, like the son of God. Now Cain brought in from the crops of his field, but Abel brought in an offering from among his lambs. <laughs> what? Lambs, the Lamb of God. See, Abel is associating with the Lamb of God and, and, and truth and um, loving, compassion, kindness, decency, etc., etc., that is recognizable by God and rewarded, as it were, Whereas um, Cain is just looking at, at throwing food down on a table to offer to, to God who is spirit. That's inappropriate. So Cain isn't really having anything, isn't bringing anything forward to offer. Um, God looked upon the votive offerings of Abel, but he did not accept the votive offerings of Cain. And carnal Cain, you know, the physical creator aspect of the light, pursued Abel, his brother. The two sons, uh, sever like severity and mercy, Cain and Abel, and God said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? 
So that is referring to the idea that we have an energy cosmic system that hasn't ascended yet for the individual. So the, the, um, to say, said to Cain, said to the physical nature, where is Abel your brother? Where is the son of God? He hasn't been produced yet. He answers saying, am I then my brother's keeper? Because they're, they're complete opposites. God said to Cain, listen, the voice of your brother's blood is crying up to me. Abel's blood is lamb's blood. Because the lamb is slain when you, when you ascend and, and produce the son of God. The son of God is a slain lamb. It's bleeding its lifeblood in all directions as light. So it's symbolically red only. You have sinned with your mouth. You have sinned with your mouth, Cain. Yeah, because the, this creator speaks the universe into, into existence with the sound of creation. It will return to you. Anyone, it will return to you. <laughs> Anyone who kills Cain will let loose seven vengeances. That's a reference to the kingdom, the kingdoms. And you will exist groaning and trembling upon the earth. You will reincarnate, as it were. You will experience them, the harshness of physical life. And Adam knew his female counterpart, Eve, and she became pregnant and bore Seth to Adam. She bore anointing to Adam, to the Creator. She bore the Son of God. She made the Son of God, as you and me in the cosmos. And she said, I have borne another man through God in place of Abel. That's ascension again. Um, so uh, Cain and Abel, if you take that just as, as the light that produces the cosmic cycle, now we have ascension, which is Seth. So this works. Again, Eve became pregnant and she bore Norea. Norea is humanity. And she said, he has begotten on me a virgin as an assistance for, my, for many generations of mankind. Here you go. That's you and me, all of us. She is the virgin whom the forces did not defile. Uh, then mankind began to multiply and improve. Um, she is the virgin whom the forces did not defile. Uh, really another reference to um, ascension. Uh, the rulers took counsel with one another and said, Come, let us cause a deluge with our hands and obliterate all flesh from man to beast. Once again, precisely the same concept as before. Coming together in a council is the end of the kingdoms that are about to reproduce the Son of God with a great flood of the great ocean of chaos known as the abyss that is the great flood ascension is the great flood of creation ascension is creation it's the same issue come let us cause a deluge let um, ascension is going to occur with our hands and obliterate all flesh in other words wipe out the physical world to the individual who ascends above it and everything goes black and you can't see anything physical anymore that's what wiping out the world is like is is, is about it's like saying uh, every mountain and island is removed from its place in revelation six fourteen, i think that is um but yeah but when the ruler of the forces that that's the creator of the kingdoms came to know of their decision to ascend the situation the, the situation of ascension at the end of the kingdoms he said to Noah Noah is the son of God make yourself an ark from some wood that does not rot and hide in it you and your children and the beasts and the birds of heaven from small to large and set it upon Mount Sir so here's Noah and the Ark as a repository of information that produces Noah. The mountain of God, if you look at our graphic of the expansion of the cosmos and turn it on its side so it now looks like a mountain, that is the mountain of God as if it's a physical pyramid that had to be built to reach ascension. And look what's at the very top. It's the abyss with the Son of God as a singularity, as if that is the heavenly realm at the top of God's mountain. And Orea came to him wanting to board the ark, and when he would not let her, she blew her upon the ark and caused it to be consumed by fire. Okay, so now, again, he made the ark for a second time. Oh, that's a very convoluted way of saying 
Then Araya came to him wanting to board the ark, and when he would not let her, she blew, up the, she blew upon the ark and caused it to be consumed by fire. So the ark can be taken to be the light itself as a boat with oars sticking out of it and the cosmos, because they're both about information. The creator is the minimal information of the cosmos, and the cosmos is all the information that you need to make the creator. So they can be both taken as repositories of information like an ark. But we can take the, the cosmos as the ark, because the, the cosmos expands as a, uh, a spherical bubble, like a circle, like we see with the great architect. And as such, I've heard descriptions of Noah's ark being a circular boat. Well, it's not a boat on the ocean. Um, it, it's circular because it's, that's the expansion of the cosmos, and the cosmos is the container of information that makes the... Uh, creator and son of God who produces the cosmos who produces the creator chicken egg, chicken egg, they produce each other they go round and round like this um, so now the light is being referred to as an ark and a fire again he made the ark for a second time so that that's why a, a complete loop round the, the, crea uh, the creative cycle there and then you start again with the, with the cosmos for a second time after ascension the rulers went to meet her, intending to lead her astray. That sounds like incarnating. Their supreme chief said to her, Your mother, Eve, came to us. Yeah, she, she is the, the accumulation of the kingdoms. But Nerea turned to them and said to them, It is you who are the rulers of the darkness. You are accursed. Yeah, you're the rulers of what's physical and not light, spiritual. And you did not know my mother. Instead, it was your female counterpart that you knew, the physical nature for I am not your descendant, rather it is from the world above that I am come. That's right. Aurea is an ascended person. The arrogant ruler turned with all his might and his countenance, came to be like a black something. He said to her presumptuously, You must render service to us, as did also your mother Eve, for I have been given something something. In other words, they're saying you must go through incarnation. But Nerea turned with the might of something, and in a loud voice she cried out, Up to the Holy One, the God of the entirety, rescue me from the rulers of unrighteousness and save me from their clutches forthwith. Get me out of this physical place. I want to be spiritual. The great angel came down from the heavens and said to her, Why are you crying up to God? Why do you act so boldly towards the Holy Spirit? Nerea said, Who are you? The rulers of the unrighteousness had withdrawn from her. This is now she's in a state of ascension. He said, It is I who am Eleleth. El, El means God, God. Eth is simply the ending of a word like uh, manners maketh man. You could say manners make man. You don't need the eth on the end. In other words, LLF is LL, which is God, God, which is creator, redeemer. So it's, it's about the, the nature of the light. Sagacity, the great angel, yeah, the light, who stands in the presence of the Holy Spirit, the abyss. The spiritual nature of the abyss is the Holy Spirit. I have been sent to speak with you and save you from the grasp of the lawless, and I shall teach you about your root. There you go. That's what happens to an illuminate. You learn about creation. In these terms, in these archetypal patterns, as it were, the nature of accumula energy accumulation. Now, as for that angel, I cannot speak of his power. His appearance is like fine gold, and his raiment is like snow. Snow. His, his hair is white as snow. It's a pure white. Um, gold uh, really um, is a symbolic reference to the sun in the sense that um, the sun represents your psyche during your life and when it reaches its high point it, it represents ascension and it's eclipsed by the moon there's a lot to say there symbolically however the sun is gold and gold associates with your psyche which sees the birth of the son of God so the son of God can be associated with the color gold as well no truly my mouth cannot bear to speak of his power and the appearance of his face because <laughs> when you see it, it's quite awesome. It's a, a massive cumulonimbus cloud with beams of light coming out of it in the same shape as the head of a lion. What can you say? LLF, the great angel, spoke to me. 
It is I, he said, who am understanding. That's right. When you gain understanding, you ascend. God is the understanding you need. I am one of your I am one of the four light givers who stand in the presence of the great invisible spirit. Right. So that is the metaphysics. Uh, do you think these rulers have any power over you? None of them can prevail against the root of truth. That's right. Um, the root of truth is singular, and singular is not physical, spiritual. For on its account he appeared in the final ages, and these authorities will be restrained. Right, that's talking about ascension in terms of an individual. Um, for on its account he appeared in the final ages. That's the end of the cycle of the kingdoms. And these authorities, the kingdoms themselves, will be restrained so you rise above the nature of physical level. And these authorities cannot defile you, and that generation, yeah, illuminates, are not defiled by anything physical anymore. For your abode is an incorruptibility, that's right, where the virgin spirit dwells, uh, God who is superior to the authorities of chaos and to the universe. Absolutely true. But I said, sir, teach me about the faculty of these authorities. How did they come into being and by what kind of genesis and what material of what material and who created them and their force? There's a question about how does, it, where, how does all this come about? And the great angel LLS, understanding, spoke to me. Within limitless realms dwells incorruptibility. That's God. Sophia, who is called Pistis, wanted to create something alone without her consort. That's the female nature being talking, spoken about in terms of manifesting, manifesting things and bringing things about. It's all a feminine. The womb generates new life, literally, physically, so um, manifesting is associated with female. Sophia, who was called Pist Sophia, who was called Pistis, wanted to create something alone without her consort, and her product was a celestial thing. That's the Creator. Remember, Sophia is also referring to the physical nature of the Creator. Something only physical, as it were, in those terms. Um, a veil exists between the world above and the realms that are below. The veil is the halfway, the, the Son of God there, the, um, it is the veil between heaven and earth, it's the, the gateway between the two. And shadow came into being beneath beneath the veil, that's physical energy, shadow is energy. And that shadow became matter, that's right, with the kingdoms, energy becomes material. And that shadow was projected apart, projected apart, you know, the expansion of the universe. Uh, energy expansion of the universe and what she had created became a product in the matter that's right in the universe the light appears and illuminates like an aborted fetus it looks pretty hideous anyway and it assumed a plastic form molded out of shadow molded out of energy it's energy that produces it it's expansion that produces it of course you, you from a physical pineal gland and became an arrogant beast resembling a lion again the creator it was androgynous that's right as i have already said but it was from matter that it derived that's right it's born from your head center of your head opening his eyes he saw a vast quantity of matter without limit that's the creator, opens his eyes when he appears, the universe expands and he's looking into the universe as it were. And he became arrogant saying, it is I who am God and there is none apart from me. Yes, that's the expansion of the cosmos again. When he said this, he sinned against the entirety, yet again the repetition. And the voice came forth from above the realm of absolute power saying, you are mistaken, Samael, which is God of the blind. And he said, if any other thing exists before me, let it become visible to me. And immediately Sophia stretched forth her finger and introduced light into matter. And she pursued it down to the region of chaos. That's the same thing again. It's just a repetition we're hearing there of the principle of uh, um, the ascension cycle. 
and she returned up to her light once again darkness something matter yeah, once again darkness something matter means that when you ascend the physical nature of the light now produces the cosmic cycle but you're above that now this ruler by being androgynous made himself a vast realm an extent without limit that's the abyss notice the semantics suggests that he made it when really he's a product of its expansion from you and he contemplated creating offspring for himself that's you and me physically and created for himself seven offspring that's the kingdoms androgynous just like their parents that refers to the fact that the the early kingdoms are positive negative charges and then when it, you have more complicated energy accumulations you have bodies like animals and creatures that are male and female gender so that the kingdom is is um, androgynous uh, and he said to his offspring it is I who am the god of the entirety that's the creator talking and Zoe which means life the daughter of Pistis Sophia cried out and said to him you are mistaken Sakla for which the alternate name is Yaldabaoth that means child passed through here Sakla means fool she breathed into his face breathing into his face means she's right in front of him and he's the light so she's in a moment of ascension that's what's being referred to when, when someone breathes into the face of the creator and her breath became a fiery angel for her yeah that's just telling you that it, it, the creator is a fiery angel of light for her meaning it's the son of god for her now in ascension that's the son of god you're seeing and that angel bound Yaldabaoth and cast him down in, into Tartarus below the abyss. Right now, semantics have come into play here. Um, be very careful because it sounds like Yaldabaoth is a separate issue when in fact Yaldabaoth is the physical nature of that same light. So when she's breathing into his face, she's looking at the Son of God, the light as the Son of God, and yet its physical quality is Yaldabaoth and he is now only he can only be associated with the physical cycle which ends at the seventh kingdom it's god and humans uh, that, that produce that eighth kingdom as it were the son of god yeah and cast him down into tartarus below the abyss um that sounds like well that is really tartarus i would say that is the um the universe cast him down into Tartarus below the abyss the abyss is in the middle of our scheme there in the Titian's painting so below is the universe the cosmos um, so he cast him down so he, he's entering incarnation as you and me physically now when his offspring Sabaoth that is the hosts of heaven like an army saw the force of that angel he repented and condemned his father and his mother matter he loathed her but he sang songs of praise up to sophia and her daughter zoe that's life and sophia and zoe caught him up and gave him charge of the seventh heaven below the veil between above and below and he is called god of the forces sabaoth the hosts of heaven since he is up above the forces of chaos for Sophia established him well that that is talking about the the light as the son of God being established above um, anything that's there's no good basically um, he loathed her well that's, that's the creator the creator is a nasty piece of work the devil uh, the son of God is the best person you've ever met you know it's, it's the same thing but it's uh, spiritual now when these events had come to part actually for Sophia established him well wisdom establishes the son of God now when these events had come to pass he made himself a huge four-faced chariot of cherubim and infinitely many angels to act as ministers and also harps and lyres well that that's basically saying he, he's making angels from the cosmos um, the four-faced chariot um, associates with the number four which is stability the stability of the creator of course esoterically we can talk about uh, the four na uh, nature of um, um, and we can talk about the four elements there the four elements that come from the creator and, and recombine to make him as the fifth element in fact and Sophia took her daughter Zoe life and had her sit upon his right at his right hand in ascension 
So wisdom takes life and puts it at the right hand of the creator or the delight, the son of God, in fact, to teach him about the things that exist in the eighth heaven. So the idea there is the creator can see you appearing at the end of his right hand just before the cosmos expands. And it is now the eighth heaven because the seventh kingdom produces the eighth. We ascend and we see the light as the son of God. That's the eighth kingdom or the eighth heaven. And the angel of wrath she placed upon his left. Since that day, his right has been called life. That's the end of his right hand is where life comes from. And the left has come to represent the unrighteousness of the realm of absolute power above it. That's a reference to the energetic nature of the abyss, because it's the abyss, the, the, the power above it, the aeon. And yet the abyss is the start of the cosmos as a singularity. And it's the mental plane in terms of spiritual nature and the Holy Spirit. So it associates with both. Now, when Yaldabaoth saw him in this great splendor and at this height, he envied him. That's the creator physical nature, or Cain, looking at Abel in envy, the son of God, how beautiful it is. And the envy became an androgynous product. And this was the origin of envy. So that's just a physical nature um, you, know, um, you can associate with ego. And envy engendered death. Yeah, the envy here is being referred to as a generation of life that has death in it, people born and they die, it's all physical. And death engendered his offspring and gave each of them charge of its heaven. And all the heavens of chaos became full of their multitudes while the universe fills with people. <clears throat> but it was by the will of the Father of the entirety that they all came into being after the pattern of all the things above, so that the sum of chaos might be attained, to know the self properly, truly, completely. There I have taught you about the pattern of the rulers and the matter in which it was expressed and their parent and their universe. So the rulers are the kingdoms, and the parent is the creator light and their universe. But I said, sir, am I also from their matter? You, together with your offspring, are from the primeval Father, from above, out of the imperishable light. Their souls are come. Thus the authorities cannot approach them because of the spirit of truth present within them. And all who have become acquainted with this way exist deathless in the midst of dying mankind. All those who ascend become deathless. Still, that sown element, sperma, will not become known now. Instead, after three generations it will come to be known notice another reference to the number three even though it's three generations it's the same thing as um, the third day it's it's the third aspect of spirit so so god is one we are the second one um, and the third one is going to be the expansion of the holy spirit so it's the abyss in other words generating uh, the cosmos it will come to be known and has freed them from the bondage of the authorities error so when you find God and expand uh, from the center of your head, you are free from the error of the physical nature. Then I said, Sir, how much longer? He said to me, Until the moment when the true man, within a modeled form, reveals the existence of the spirit of truth which the Father has sent, with that spiritual union and, the, and attaining the keys to heaven. Until the moment when the true man, God, within a modeled form, reveals the existence of the spirit of truth, until God, until you meet God within yourself and ascend, producing the spirit, of, producing the truth with flesh, which the Father has sent into you. Then He will teach them about everything. That's the illuminate, um, and He will, well, God, the light will teach the illuminate about everything, and He will anoint them with the unction. That's anointing of life eternal, given Him from the undominated generation from spirit then they will be freed of blind thought that's ignorance and they will trample underfoot death because they ascend which is of the authorities the kingdoms and the rulerships of, of what's physical and they will ascend into the limitless light where the, this sown element belongs heaven then the authorities will relinquish their ages and their and their angels will weep over their destruction and their demons will lament their death the cosmos will run itself out basically in a cycle and, re and start up again at equals zero. 
then all the children of the light will be truly acquainted with the truth and their root and the father of the entirety that's God and the Holy Spirit that's the completeness of, of the self in spiritual terms the, the totality of metaphysics they will all say with a single voice the father's truth is just and the son presides over the entirety the son of God and from everyone until the unto the ages of ages holy 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 amen metaphysics again the very last statement in the in the text is metaphysics um so i hope that was enjoyable i really enjoyed going through that i, I really like um, reading a Gnostic text and, and, and grasping what it's properly trying to say you know as far as I'm concerned I've just explained to you exactly what is contained in that text so um, I hope that makes sense <laughs> I really do um, any questions please ask don't hesitate and um, take care of yourself and thank you very much for watching